Oh, hi. I didn't see you there, Cooper family. Well, anyways, welcome to my book talk for the February books I read. Um, this is going to be a fun video because I have been very excited about reading this last month for some reason. I don't know why. I just got really motivated. And I think I had a very good month, and I just want to share it with you. Um, I know this is not, like, directly Keeper of Lost Cities related. I actually did not read the Keeper of Lost Cities series this month. But it's all good fun, and it relates to books, so why not? If you're excited, hit the like button, and if you want to subscribe to this channel, you got a lot of stuff coming, so make sure to hit subscribe. Let's get into this February book reading video. Let's go. So, I have been crazy with books this month, reading a total of nine books. Yeah, it's a lot. Nine books in one month. Well, I mean, some may have spilled over to March a little bit, but that's okay. Nine books a month, that's like almost two per week. Um, I've been reading 200 pages a day, like weekdays, for most of the time, and I've been reading 400 pages on the weekends. It's been a lot, and y'all, sometimes I just read instead of homework, so probably shouldn't be doing that. Um, let's go over the books I read and then talk about them a little bit and also some future planning for um, March books, which I'm already in the thick of that. So yeah, these are the books I read. The Fork, The Witch, and the Worm by Christopher Pellini. The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mass. Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass. Heir of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass. Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Mass. Tower of Dawn by, yes, Sarah J. Mass. Kingdom of Ash by Sarah J. Mass. And The Omnivore's Dilemma by Michael Pollan. So those are all the books I read in February. I think the last two books, Kingdom of Ash and The Omnivore's Dilemma, I think I read those a little bit in March. Like I might have finished this like March 2nd and this like March 3rd or whatever, but it doesn't matter too much. You don't gotta be so stressed about that. It's like a total of a lot of books. <laughs> if you can see the stack. I can't even carry it. This is how much books I read in February, and I enjoyed every second of it. So now I'm going to go over some of these individual books, and um, yeah, I'll tell you what my ratings were for each, and if I had a review, I will um, share that with you. So let's get straight with the first book. So the first book I read in February was The Fork, The Witch, and the Worm by Christopher Paolini, which I gave this book a five-star rating. Um, I feel like I just really enjoyed it, and I feel I just, I don't know, it it was short and sweet, and I kind of like that aspect. Um, one of the stories in here is kind of like a collection of novellas, if you think about it, was kind of quite long, but I did enjoy the story. Um, I just remember sitting down for once, and I was like, I just am going to read all this. I was like, yes. So I actually did end up um, starting this on February 8th. And finished it February 9th, so only took me two days to read this. Um, very good book. Let's see what my review was. Oh, let's see my, what um, my review on Goodreads was. I said, wow, this book was awesome. I had finished The Inheritance Cycle a few week before I had read this, and I really anticipated some sort of sequel. And then I went on Goodreads, and here we are. This was a very quick and pleasant sequel to Aragon's story along with Murtag and Angelo. We also had an amazing story of a female Urgul named Ilgra, which really proved some background info to the whole older culture and tradition. I really loved the first two parts, the fork and the witch. We had alternating points of views between Aragon and other characters. I especially liked the tale of Murtag and Essie, as it told us a little more of the aftermath of Murtag and how he was doing. The second part was also nice as we learned more about Angela and Elva. Angela is a very strange character indeed, and it was nice to gain some insight to gain her character. The last part, though, the worm wasn't as good. Again, I love this story, but it was too long. I would rather have made one whole book about this story and not just um, to fit it into alternating perspective story. 
It was over 100 pages long, and that didn't match with um, any of the other perspectives. But I really like Ilgra and the story of how she grows and learns many things on her ultimate quest. In general, this book was amazing. I'm glad that Christopher Paolini didn't decide to leave us with the ending of The Inheritance Cycle, and I hope for more books to come. So yeah, that was my review. I really did like this, and I, I jumped through it pretty quick. I just finished The Inheritance Cycle, and I, I saw the sequel and I was like, yes, please, because Inheritance Cycle was very interesting. So let's move on to our second book that we read, which was actually a series, but I'm only going to review the first one because if I review the other ones, it's going to be kind of weird and spoiler, so let's just jump into that right now. So next I read the prequel. Um, I don't want to go into this really because I don't know if this is spoiling or not. And if anyone is like wondering if they want to read this or not, or like what order they should put this in, I would recommend this reading it after Queen of Shadows. I'd recommend that because then she starts to get into this book more and it starts referencing things in this book and I think that it's key to read at that time. Um, that being said though, these series are a lot more um, mature for more mature readers. Um, probably if you're preferably 13 or up, a teenager, then I would read this. Now, here we are. The next book that I read is Throne of Glass, which this is the start of the series called Throne of Glass. And um, this series is gosh darn amazing. I have the full set of books because I love it so much. Yeah, it's pretty much. So let me pull up my review and I will tell you all about it. Throne of Glass is about um, a prisoner of, or a slave, of the Indovir salt mines in Aralea. Um, her name is Selena Sardothian, and she is a famous assassin before she was, um, of course, enslaved or whatever, and captured. She has the chance to compete in a competition to become the king's champion and basically kill whoever he asks her to. So, yeah, that's pretty fun. And so she is in a castle among 24 other competitors, thieves, assassins, soldiers, everyone kind of like that. And they begin this competition, but something unusual starts to happen. Magic starts to come back in unusual ways and unusual creatures start to enter into this world and it's very strange because this world is not magical so because the king outlawed magic so it's a pretty interesting read um and i dec recommend definitely checking it out because it is very good very strong writing very good plot i loved it i started reading this on february 13th and i finished reading it on february 15th again a very quick book it's only 400 and 10 pages or something like that so it's quick and easy and even just reading this as like a standalone if you don't want to read the whole eight book series or whatever that's cool too so here's my review i said love love loved it i might even love it more than when i first read this i'm always gonna love the badass character selena couldn't have been written any better and sarah j mass did great on not boring us to death I found a lot of emotional elements slash tones in this book. We had the underlying the creepy mysterious theme of the champion killers, the humor behind Selena's character, and also that pang of sadness for Sam and her parents. I really love this aspect because it has a nice bit of everything. I can laugh at times, maybe shed a tear a few instances, I don't know. Another thing that I liked was the whole competition idea. I can always go into like the sort of one by one elimination games where everyone goes off one by one. I feel as if this represents in other books I have previously read. Ah, Divergent it was. I enjoy the concept of the characters struggling to stay in the competition and outlast the other competitors. Lastly, we had a bit of romance in this book. It was kind of a lesser theme and that kind of made it better I guess. Um, this is good as it starts to accelerate more through the series. And I love how Sarah J. Mass likes to just end some of our favorite ships just like that. Overall, I enjoyed reading this book. It was not a chore, and why would I read this? Because I do not like doing chores. A good pace, good storyline, good resolution, good action, good world building, good, good, good. But really, good isn't the best word to describe this book. It was amazing. 
and one of my favorite books yet, I guess. Really good book, and I highly recommend it. And I enjoyed reading it for February this month. Um, I will just show you the other books briefly and show you what my rating was. So after Throne of Glass, I read Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass. This was also a great, great book, and I enjoyed it a lot. It wasn't one of my favorite books in the series, just like Queen of Shadows, but I think it was very important for the plot. And I think some stuff goes down, so that's pretty good. Um, after that, I read Air of Fire, which was a great relief because we could have gotten away from that particular area of the world and we got to travel somewhere else. And we had some new culture and customs and traditions. So I think that was that was fun to read. And the resolution was good. I think the pace was pretty good. And we started to have a lot more of the perspective split. So it's not just Elena. We have perspectives from a lot more people in here. And a lot of the action starts to build up for the rest of the series here. Which was good. Um, Queen Shadows. Um, perspectives are breaking down even more. Um, characters are being introduced. We're finally starting to settle in to the series. But really, I, do, I didn't like the plot of this book too much. It kind of just took a long time to get things started, I guess. Um, so it did, it did drag at the start of the series, but it really started picking up, and actually I, I did enjoy this book. After that, I read Emperor of Storms, which I definitely gave a five stars, because this was a great book. I just, I, did, there's nothing wrong with this. Although the ending, some may say, is kind of bad, I, I loved it. I, I really did, and I think that the ending makes it so that we can continue the series. And, yeah, I don't, I don't want to spoil too much, but I, th I think the adventure was really amazing. I enjoyed reading it. It was, it was very fast-paced. Um, we got characters, romance, everything. Wow. Next, we have Tower of Dawn, also by Sarah J. Mass. Sarah J. Mass is a great author. Better check her out. But Tower of Dawn was actually a parallel to Empire of Storms. So these books went on at the same time. Books are falling over in there. I've got a lot of books around me, guys. It's not good. I took them all off my shelf. Now I have to reshelf them. So yeah, Tower of Dawn was um, really good because we got to tell the story of Kaol at this point in time. And I think that was a good, good, definitely good for Kaol's character because um, I enjoyed reading this really much. Like, I don't even know. Joey said he um, this was his favorite book in the series and I might have to agree with him because it was just so good. And since he's in a different part of the world, um, we have new culture, new traditions, and I feel like I like those traditions and culture because it's all in one book. And it was just a really fast-paced information book. Some may say it was slow-paced because one day might drag out 200 pages, but that's totally fine for me. I don't know. So, yeah. And then we have the epic conclusion in Kingdom of Ash. I mean... Seriously, y'all, like, this book wanted to make me cry, but I didn't cry at the end. I really did want to cry at the end of this, because just because I've, like, read these books for a month, I've been reading so much, and it concludes, and I'm just like, I want to cry, because I just feel like I need that emotional kind of part with the book. But that never happened, and yeah, I just, I everything was so fast, it would, like, and then there was all the different perspectives too, so it was like really fast paced. I think I like the ending. People did not like the ending, but I like the ending. And look how shiny it is, y'all. And this was so close to being 1,000 pages too. I really wanted it to be 1,000 pages, but it's 984. Like, don't tease me like that. This could be my first 1,000 page book, but it never did. Hopefully Keeper of the Lost Cities gets to that much pages because we can do that. Last but not least, the Omnivore's Dilemma by Michael Pollan. Let me pull up my rating and we'll review it. Okay, so I rated this book three out of five stars. Um, this was given as a curriculum at our school and everyone was required to read this book. And I think I actually did. I feel like I'm more informed about the whole food chains after this and I feel like I'm better off with reading it. I have no like regrets of reading this, although it's mandatory. So, yeah. I mean, a lot of people were complaining about reading this, but, I mean, just look at the cover. It's beautiful. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, I've, I finished, I started reading this all the way back in, like, January, and I finally finished it this month. 
because, I don't know, our curriculum is really slow. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I this book is all about um, the what to eat and what not to eat. There are four food chains that Michael Pollan writes about, and that's the modern food chain, the industrial food chain, and there's the industrial organic food chain, then there's the local sustainable meal, and then there's the hunting and gathering. And there's these four distinct food chains, and he goes over each one, um, and why it's bad or good, and like which one we should use. And to be honest, I haven't thought about food this much until I've read this book, and I feel like I'm just a lot more conscious about it now. And I think that's a good thing because, I mean, it's my life we're talking about. I'm putting food into my body that I shouldn't be eating or I should be eating. And it's like, I really need to be careful about what I'm eating. And it was a nonfiction book. I don't usually read these books on my own time, but it was, it was a fun read. It was a quick read too. So here is my review. This book was a part of the curriculum given at our school, but I still thoroughly enjoyed it. I loved to read about Michael Pollan's journey through all the food chains and gained a lot of insight about the food we eat. Although this is something I would usually pick up and read, I think I was better off reading it. The modern food industry is nasty, and I'm glad I could actually understand the simple fact. One note though, which was why I got a 3 star rating, is that Pollan goes on for about 4-5 to five chapters just on corn and how it's in everything and how it's bad and how it's sprinkled in weapons and whatever the heck it was saying. <laughs> it was boring and you don't want to bore at the start of a book. If you're interested in food or in general, or how and where it comes from, read this book. I mean, y'all, if you have any questions about food, this will probably answer it. So yeah. But also, if you read the book, you'll probably be, you probably won't want to eat too much stuff after it, because it kind of just will disgust you. So yeah, for that simple fact. Um, so yeah, that was a pretty good book. And that wraps up all the books I read in February. Let's go on to Troy's Picks. So for February, my books that I've read, I'm picking Throne of Glass to be my pick for the month. Pick just means my favorite, really. Um, this is just applies to the whole series. Really, I'm kind of picking the series, but this is the star book. I really enjoyed this lead character that's telling the story is such a doll, and we want to read about her. She's interesting. Um, she often offers us comical relief, and I think just how she develops from being a prisoner in the mines to being a semi-decent civilian, um, probably, like, treated more well than a lot of, like, other people. Just a journey, and I really, I do, I stress out that I just loved the game and how they would have tests each week and one person would leave. And it was cool to see how she would do in it compared to others. I mean, just look at the cover. It's a beauty. You want to have this on your shelf. I mean, just look at it. And here is the back, if you just were interested in seeing what it's about. You can pause it right now and read it if you want. I just, I really loved it, and I really su would suggest that you read it, because this series is long, just like Keeper of Lost Cities back here. It's a long series, and it's interesting, and it'll never, ever, ever bore you. And it's a lot more mature, so like if you're a teen reader, um, I think you would want to read it. Because... It's more, it's made for an older audience, and the narrator is in her 20s at that point in time. So I think it just makes for a more older read book. And, you know, Sophie's back here being 14, so yeah. <laughs> so that wraps up, like, Troy's pick. And let's go on to my planning for March and maybe onwards from that. So as we finished February's books and reviewed all of them and just, you know, gave us our rating, just gave us a general overview and had our book talk because I like book talk. Y'all, every morning I have these people in my math class and I just talk to them for a solid 30 minutes about books and it's nice. As I'm easing out of the Throne of Glass series, I'm entering a new series that has a lot of hype and my friends in that math class have 
hyped me up about it for the longest time, and I just started reading it two days ago, and we're already into it. So, yeah, that is the Shadowhunter Chronicles. There are about, like, 15 books in the Shadowhunter Chronicles, so I'm probably not going to read all of them March. It's probably going to take me all of March, all of April. There is more books coming out. Like, there's three books coming out this year. One that's coming out April 9th. One, I believe, is June 4th. Another in November. So, so like, by the time I am actually finished, there might be two more books or three more books. So, yeah. Um, the, the Shadowhunter Chronicles is very hard to kind of commemorate into one Thing. It's basically a genre because there are several series in the Shadowhunter Chronicles, starting with the Mortal Instruments, which starts with City of Bones, which you saw me reading at the start of the video, and it's going great so far, y'all. <laughs> um, so we have the Mortal Instruments, which is City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and City of the Heavenly Fire. Then there are the Infernal Devices, which is Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess. And there are the Dark Artifices, which is Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and Queen of Air and Darkness. There is um, the Bane Chronicles. There is also Tales from the Shadowhunter Academy. There's the Shadowhunters Codex. There's a lot of books. We also have The Red Scrolls of Magic coming out. And we also have Ghost of the Shadowhunter Market coming out June 4th. And we also have Chain of Gold coming out this year. So it's a lot of books. And I've had a lot of trouble. Because like at the start, I was like, how am I going to read the series? So I did a lot of research. And there was a lot of opinions about it. But I have picked one that seems to be more popular and allows me to kind of do my binge reading than I do. So, it starts out with the first three books of the Mortal Instruments, with it, which is City of Bones, City of Ashes, City of Glass. And then we're going to break it apart and we're going to read Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, Clockwork Princess. And then, finally, we're going to read the rest of the... We're going to read the rest of the Mortal Instruments, which is City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, and City of Heavenly Fire. And then I'm going to read the Bane Chronicles, Tales from a Shadowhunter Academy, then the Dark Artifices, which is Lady Midnight, Lord of Shadows, and then Queen of Air and Darkness. Yeah, it's a lot. And so I am kind of ready to immerse myself into this world because already it's, it's going good and I mean, I just... I love the I love the characters already. I especially love Jace and Clary. So I'm just excited to get through this and I will tell you all about these this series in next month's book talk, which I'm already excited for. Yeah. So I think that wraps up this book talk. I would care to mention that I'm going to read don't yell at me yell at me for in the comments for not reading these puppies this year. I haven't read them this year in I am really planning to. I am planning to read them after the Shadowhunters Chronicles, which might be in March, might be start the end of April, might be in May, we'll see. But I'm excited to read those again too, because those are quick and easy, and I can actually review those in full because it's the KOTLC fan base channel, y'all. Let's go. If you like this video, please drop a like on this video and get the thumbs up rate going. Rocket it up to the sky. One like equals one skyscraper. How many skyscrapers are we going to get? Are we going to make it to the space? I don't know. Um, if you want to comment something, I'm going to give you a few prompts. Um, you can ask us any, ask me any questions about these books, and I will gladly answer them um, for you. And um, also, if you would like a review of the full Throne of Glass series, that would be, I would love doing that. If you want that, please put that in the comments. Um, anyone who wasn't that interested, please put, I would want to be interested in that because I would gladly do it for you. And I would be glad to just make a big book talk, one hour book talk or whatever, about the series. And that would be awesome. Again. Have you read any of the books I've read this month? I don't know, put that in the comments too. <laughs> So, also, subscribe to our channel. We are almost at 600 subscribers. It's very awesome. It's, like, mind-blowing because one out of five YouTubers have as much subscribers as us.
because there are like 25, 26 million YouTube creators, and we're in the 5 millionth rank. Y'all are doing great. Y'all are pushing us up with subscribers. <laughs> yeah. Um, share this video with your friends. Share our channel with your friends so we can get this subscriber, subscriber rank up, and we can grow our keeper army, and we can have a great big community, and it's going to be really fun. Y'all, just imagine once we get 1,000 subscribers, we're going to have people commenting like crazy, and we're just going to like have a great fun time. It's going to be great. So yeah, I mean, I'm really continuing this outro for like six minutes. I don't know why. I just love talking to y'all. So that's fun. <laughs> uh, yeah. I think this is finally goodbye. I will see you next time for the next book talk of March. Bye.